I'm Ming from Huazhong University of Science and Technology. I present Ford, a fast one-sided RDMA-based distributed transaction processing system for the new disaggregated persistent memory architecture. Traditional data centers consist of many monolithic servers. Each server hosts some computer units and memory modules. However, this monolithic architecture suffers from low resource utilization, cost, failure domain, and poor elasticity. To avoid these drawbacks, memory disaggregation decouples the compute and memory resources to independent resource pools. The compute pool contains many CPUs for execution, and the memory pool contains lots of memory modules to store application data. The pools communicate using fast network, such as RDMA. With the rise of persistent memory, or PM, data centers can use non-volatile and large memories with low latency and costs. Therefore, the efficient use of PM becomes important to build a cost-effective disaggregated PM pool. Transaction is a fundamental requirement to ensure the ACID property for applications on the disaggregated architecture. For example, after a client buys a desk online, the shop needs to update its stock and balance in an atomic manner, which is implemented by a transaction. When the data are stored in different servers, the transaction becomes distributed since we need to atomically operate data across multiple servers through the network. In general, a coordinator is leveraged to process a distributed transaction. Due to the atomicity and strong consistency guarantees, the distributed transaction becomes a key building block in many systems. Recent studies leverage RDMA to process distributed transactions. Specifically, the coordinator issues RDMA requests to access remote data. The concurrency control schemes, such as two-phase locking and optimistic concurrency control, or OCC, are leveraged to serialize transactions. Moreover, to provide high availability, existing systems incorporate the primary backup replication. Each data has one primary and several backup replicas, and each replica can be accessed by multiple coordinators. When running transactions on disaggregated PM, the replicas are durably stored in PM pool, which also contains some weak computer units only for memory allocation and RDMA connection. These computer units are not used during transaction processing since they are too weak to handle substantial tasks. The computer pool does not store any replica and runs coordinators to handle transactions that assess data in remote PM. Moreover, the computer pool contains small DRAM caches to temporarily store the processing results and the metadata, such as remote data addresses. The processing results are finally committed to the PM pool. Unfortunately, state-of-the-art RDMA-based transaction systems such as FARM and DRTM become inefficient on disaggregated PM due to two reasons. First, they are designed on monolithic architecture in which each server contains a CPU to run coordinators and a memory to store replicas. However, in the disaggregated architecture, the PM pool stores all the replicas but does not contain CPU to handle transaction requests. Therefore, prior two-sided RDMA-based RPC schemes fail to work due to involving remote CPUs. Second, existing works are designed on DRAM plus SSD, which do not consider the bandwidth and persistency properties of PM. To address this problem, an intuitive solution is to leverage one-sided RDMA to bypass the CPU in PM pool. However, directly using one-sided RDMA in prior systems incurs high overhead due to three challenges. The first challenge is a long latency processing, which causes many round trips. In general, there are five phases to process a distributed transaction when using OCC and primary backup replication. First, a coordinator reads the required data from primaries and locally executes a transaction. Second, the coordinator locks the right set in primaries to serialize transaction. Third, the coordinator reads the data versions from primaries to validate that the versions are unchanged. Fourth, the coordinator sends redo logs to remote backups. Finally, after receiving all ACKs from backups, the coordinator updates and unlocks the primaries to commit the transaction. 
We observe that the read-write set consumes three round-trip times or RTTs to be read, locked, and validated. DRTMH merges locking and validation into one phase, which still consumes an RTT. Moreover, the transaction requires two RTTs to sequentially commit backups and primaries. As the coordinators and the backups are separated in different resource pools, all transactions become distributed. Therefore, these network round trips are inevitable since they cannot be transferred to local memory accesses. As a result, there are five RTTs on the critical path. To reduce latency, we need new schemes before and during commit. The second challenge is caused by the limited bandwidth of PM. PM shows lower write bandwidth than the new RDMA NIC or RNIC. However, Existing systems write redo logs to the backups, and the coordinators cannot read data from backups, since the redo logs haven't been applied to the in-place location after the transaction commits. As a result, all requests are sent to the primary. Such imbalanced load causes the PM in the primary to be a performance bottleneck. In addition, applying redo logs requires the CPU to move data, which fails to work in the PM pool. Therefore, we need a new method to read and update the backups. The third challenge is that existing DRAM-based systems do not guarantee the remote data persistency, which causes inconsistent write when using PM as remote memory. Specifically, when the coordinator writes data to the ANIC, which buffers the data in its volatile buffer and returns ACK after validating the network package. After receiving the ACK, the coordinator believes that the data has been written to PM. However, the data is possibly still in the ANIC buffer. Once the replica fails, the buffered data is lost and the inconsistency occurs. Therefore, we need a low overhead scheme to guarantee remote persistency. To tackle these challenges, we propose Ford that purely leverages one-sided RDMA to process transactions for disaggregated PM with efficient round-trip reductions and PM-conscious designs. To reduce round-trips for low latency, we propose heat-checked locking and coalescent commit schemes to accelerate transaction operations. Moreover, to balance load for high throughput, we propose a backup-enabled read scheme to allow coordinators to read data from backups. Finally, to guarantee remote persistency with low overhead, we propose a selective remote flash scheme to issue minimal remote flash operations. This is our system overview. The compute pool runs coordinators that assess data in PM pool. In steps 1 and 2, Ford enters an init stage to allocate memory and build RDMA connections. Then, Ford starts to run transactions. The client issues transactions to coordinators, which leverage one-sided RDMA to operate remote data. After processing, the coordinator reports the client the results to client. We provide a runtime library for coordinators to process transactions. The data in PM pool are organized by indexes, such as hash table. My following talk concentrates on the transaction schemes in our runtime library. To reduce latency, our heat check logging scheme reads and logs the read-write set in the execution phase. The lock request is attached on the read request in a heat check manner. Therefore, we don't need to lock and validate the read write data after the execution phase, since they cannot be modified by other coordinators, thus saving round trips. To implement this scheme in one round trip, we batch the RDMA cast and read to first lock the data and then fetch it. If the locking fails, the transaction aborts. Our heat check locking is different from the two-phase locking since we do not add any lock on the read-only data. That's maintaining the benefit of lock-free in OCC. If there are read-only data, Ford still needs to validate their versions. We can see that prior systems need three RTTs until validation, while our Ford only needs two RTTs. To accelerate the commit, we design a coalescent commit scheme to in-place update primary and backup replicas together in one round trip. Due to performing in-place updates, Ford writes the undo logs to replicas to guarantee failure atomicity. 
Roundup logs are written in parallel with transaction logic execution, thus not on the critical path. Furthermore, to prevent other coordinators from reading the data that are being updated, Ford marks these data as invisible when updating them. After receiving all ACKs from replicas, the coordinator releases the logs and sets data to be visible. This release phase, phase consumes 0 or 0 0.5 RTT in the background, because if other coordinators currently do not read the invisible data, the release phase can be fully hidden. Otherwise, other coordinators only wait for a half hour RTT after the data are visible. Therefore, prior systems consume two RTTs for separate commit, while we only use one RTT to commit the replicas together. To alleviate the bandwidth bottleneck of PM in the primary, Ford enables backups to serve the read requests. The coordinators can read the read-only data and their versions from backups, thus balancing the load to improve the support. Since Ford in-place updates the backups, there is no address redirection. Moreover, due to writing undo logs, it's unnecessary to migrate new data after the transaction commits, which meets the requirement of memory disaggregation that is not involving the CPU in the PM pool. Reading backups does not weaken the correctness since Ford validates the versions of read-only data before commit. If any version becomes stale, the coordinator aborts the transaction. To ensure remote persistency, the written data are required to be flushed from ANIC to PM. Like the CLWB instruction in a single node, an RDMA-based remote flush scheme is needed in remote node. Recently, one-sided Remote flash primitives are proposed to meet this requirement. A flash request is issued after an RDMA write to persist data from ANIC to PM. However, if we issue a flash operation after each write to each replica, such full flash scheme incurs many round trips and increases the latency. To address this issue, Ford proposed this a selective flash scheme that only issues flashes to the backups after the final write, because one flash operation works for the previously buffered data. Moreover, after the updated data are persisted in all backups, even though the primary fails, we can recover the new data from backups. By selectively issuing remote flashes, Ford reduces the round trips. Putting our schemes together, we present how Ford processes distributed transactions. First, the coordinator reads and logs the read-write set and reads the read-only data. The undo logs are written in parallel with transaction logic execution. The coordinator can also fetch the read-only data from backups to balance the load on PM. Then, the coordinator validates the versions of read-only data. After receiving all ACKs of undo logs, the coordinator in place updates all replicas together and issues remote flashes to the backups. After commit, the coordinator releases the remote data in the background. Therefore, only three RTTs are on the critical path, thus improving the performance. To learn more details about programming interfaces and implementations, please read our paper. For evaluation, we use one machine as a computer pool and two machines to form a PM pool. We implement a Kiwi store and three OLTP workloads as benchmarks. We compare Ford with Farm and DRTMH. Our selective remote flash scheme is applied on them for remote persistency. The figures show the performance on TPCC. We generate eight white houses and use 112 coordinators to concurrently run the standard transaction mix. The results demonstrate that Ford significantly improves the support and reduces the 50 and 99 percentile latencies. This is because our schemes reduce the RDMA round trips and balance the load across PMs. We use the Kiwi store to evaluate our backup enabled read scheme. The results show that by opening backups to serve the read only data, Ford improves the support as the read ratio increases. Moreover, we examine our selective remote flash scheme. The results show that selective flash
flush mitigates the 50 and 99 percentile latencies due to consuming less flush round trips than the full flush scheme. Finally, I conclude our work. As legacy transaction systems are designed for monolithic architecture and for DRAM, they become inefficient on the new disaggregated PM architecture. We propose Ford that fully leverages one-sided RDMA to process distributed transactions on disaggregated PM. Ford efficiently reduces RDMA round trips, enables backups to serve read requests, and guarantees remote persistency. We have released the source code for public use. That's all. Thanks for your listening.